holding anti-gunners accountable for deadly gun laws, Democrats destroy New York City and Oakland, and a man jumps a refrigerator on a lawnmower. This is The Loaded Mike, and I'm Dan Wass. It's ironic how the anti-gun crowd tries to hold firearm manufacturers responsible for deaths that involve their guns, but claim no responsibility for the deaths of innocent people who were rendered unarmed and helpless due to restrictive gun laws. Now, the propaganda and media hype behind so-called gun violence is nothing more than a fake rhetoric created for the purpose of gaining support for more gun regulations. The idea that the gun grabbers continue to push is that if the killer didn't have a gun, he wouldn't kill. Now, what the media won't tell you is that violence is never the result of a gun. But anytime a gun is used, they'll position it as the cause. There's no such thing as gun violence. For example, Australia had two major gun bans under the guise of preventing suicide, yet after the bans, the trajectory of the suicide rate didn't change. Giffords is notorious for pushing a false narrative that guns shoot all by themselves. England is virtually a gun-free zone, but continues to experience violence and bloodshed, although guns have essentially been banned. A comparison study was done on London and New York City, resulting in the fact that London exceeded New York City in murder in 2018. In those killings, guns were replaced with knives. And this proves that violence does not decrease in the absence of guns. Now, many would argue violence increases in the absence of good people being able to carry a gun in public. Recently in Sydney, Australia, a man stabbed six people to death at a shopping center. During the attack, shoppers fled for their lives and no one shot back. Now, the reason no one shot back is because everyone had been disarmed. It was a gun-free zone. But apparently, the killer didn't read the sign. A similar situation played out recently at a concert hall in Moscow, Russia. Where several were killed because they couldn't defend themselves. The idea of disarming lawful citizens as an attempt to stop violence is an absurdity, yet we continue to have conversations with those who perpetuate such such nonsense. We've learned that gun-free zones are the deadliest places on earth, yet left-wing politicians, anti-gun groups, and uninformed American citizens continue to push for more of these killing zones. Some conversations about holding anti-gun legislators and lobby groups like Moms Demand Action, Every Town for Gun Safety, Giffords Group, and March for Our Lives accountable for deaths due to self-defense restricting gun laws starting to occur. Do we think those who disarm American citizens and block access to self-defense should be responsible for the deaths and damage they contribute to? Statistics show that most of the gun-related deaths occur in gun-free zones. Now, the reason is obvious. When good people are disarmed, bad guys are emboldened. So who are the bad guys? Those who pull the trigger on on innocent people or those who make innocent people unarmed and helpless? So we're going to talk about this and many other things with he's about as cuddly as a rabid porcupine and he has tattoos. Anthony Deso. And I'm blushing. (laughs) And <laughs> you're blushing today. Ah, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so, so you know, it just keeps getting it just keeps getting worse. The more gun free zones we have, the more people die. And my question today for you and for everybody watching is: Should we start holding these people accountable for the death? Then they just hold a, a couple parents liable for their kids shooting up a school. Yeah. So why 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 is it okay for them to do it to them, but not the politicians who caused it? Well, and, and the way I look at it is like, if I cut the brake lines on your car, and that caused you to crash and either be hurt or die, I'd be responsible, right? Right. What's the difference if I create a gun law that that forces you to go? out in the public unarmed and you end up getting killed and you can't defend yourself. What's the difference? 
Well, to them, they're just untouchable. They seem to be invincible. They can do whatever they want and take whatever they want from you, but don't you dare go against the government. It's unbelievable. Yeah, those two parents got, what, 10 years? Yeah, I don't know. Did they? I think they got 10 years each. Were they the ones who were trying? They tra- bought the gun for their mentally ill kid when oh. he went out and did a shooting with it. Hmm. So is that the new precedence now? Yeah. Well, I, I think that if you, just like just like that, just the opposite of that, if you create a gun law that, okay, so that kid goes and he, and he goes and shoots people. Well, if they're in a gun-free zone, somebody was responsible for, di- for disarming those people in the gun-free zone. So what they did was they made people vulnerable. Yeah. But they, 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 they uh, strive off of that, though. They're, they use it as a tool against law-abiding citizens, which makes no sense at all. Well, right, because the more people <laughs> that they can get killed in gun-free zones— the more justification they have to push for more gun laws. Oh, well, we need more gun laws now. No, you need less gun laws to keep people safe. <laughs> so they're actually murdering children and using it against me and you, Yeah, which makes no sense. And I know people will flip out. The freaking lunatics on the left will flip out when I say you need less gun laws to keep people safe. But it's absolutely true. And if they would just get their head out of their ass for five minutes and think about what they're doing, they would understand that when you disarm people, make them vulnerable, you not only do you make them vulnerable, but you embolden the bad guys to come in. They, they, they know they're not going to have any opposition. They know they're not going to have anybody shooting back. So if these knuckleheads on the left would just understand that, I think they understand it. They just, they can't, they can't admit it. Well, they also they say, oh, well, that'll never happen to me. They got that right. mentality that, yeah. oh, crime will never happen to me. It's a thing. Okay, you could be at the mall and some nutcase would come in. Yeah. That happened in Kenya. It happens. It happened several times. It yeah, happened. That, in- I saw, I watched a show the other day about the Kenyan um, mall massacre where a bunch of militants went in and just murdered 10, you know, hundreds of people. They were just shopping and no one could stop them. Look at the Moscow, Russia thing just happened. Yeah. Same thing, going to a concert hall. Look at any of these situations where you have to go, if you want to go to see a concert or a football game or whatever, you go through scanners, and you'll get arrested if you if you try to bring a gun in there. Yeah. But you're bringing a gun in, logical thinking people are bringing a gun in to protect themselves and the, and the good people around them. Yeah, we're not going in there to kill people. No, no just the opposite. We're <laughs> right. going, going in there to preserve life. No one knows life. you have it. It's so ridiculous. Only certain people can go into those things, like police officers, federal aid. They can go into an arena and concert with a gun, but you can't. But in Moscow, you get these guys walking in with Kalashnikovs, just walking in the front door. Yeah. And just shooting people, killing people. And everybody, and I got it, it's so stupid because everybody is just sitting there going, uh, uh, what do I do? I can't, I can't even defend myself. Right. You're just waiting for that round to go through. You. It's it's, but it's our fault. I want to say it's your fault. You didn't push against your government when it came to this thing. You didn't push back when your government said no, you can't have a gun. Mm-hmm. You didn't say hell yes, I can have a gun. See the law. See, see, we have a constitution and bill of rights and a second amendment which here. Which our America, government doesn't follow. Which they don't follow, but at least we have that. We can go back on and we can say hell no. I, I, I'll have a gun on me when I go into wherever I go. And yep. you, Mr. Government, can't say anything about it. Because they're putting our lives at danger, and we're going, okay, oh, well, I guess I can't bring a gun in there. Okay, so we go in and we volunteer, voluntarily go in there and put ourselves at risk. Mm-hmm. So it, it's our fault just as much as it is the government taking advantage of us. Where's that other guy? Yeah, where's your where's your buddy? Must have fell asleep. Did he fall asleep and not? Too much Geritol. Oh boy, that's not nice. All right, all right. Some Colorado University students have been con- so conditioned to fear guns that they would rather have no effective way to defend themselves on campus. But rational students may be swaying the campus carry conversation in favor of life preservation. 
So here's an article by our friend Cam Edwards. Cam was just on the show a little while ago from uh, Bearing Arms. Uh, it's the title is bad news for gun banners in Colorado campus carry poll. So anti-gun activists are taking a two pronged approach in their bid to repeal Colorado's campus carry law, which has been in place for more than 20 years. A bill that would turn college campuses, among other locations, into gun free zones has already passed the state Senate while the CU Board of Regents is set to take up the current policy in June. While opponents of campus carry say it's common sense to prohibit those with concealed carry licenses from lawfully carry. Again, see, this is just a mindset. They think it's common sense to prohibit their fellow students from carrying a gun. What's going to prohibit the crazy person from coming on campus? I, exactly. On. The, see, this is what they, I, I think they're mentally. They're mental. There's something wrong with these people. They're mental. They're mental. <laughs> and why is this, this, the state senate having anything to say about college, Colorado <laughs> University? Shouldn't they be making a, that determination? Or how about just saying, <sighs> go f yourself? We're not changing the law. I thought our Bill of Rights and our founding fathers already made that determination. You know what's going to happen when they do that, right? Someone's going to shoot that college up. You watch. Yeah. These morons are going to say you cannot carry on this campus, and it's inevitable it's going to happen. And then they're going to say, <sighs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> we need more gun laws. Need- <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, they're so stupid. And these kids are so God. stupid. They don't. They, they are so dumb. The gene pool is so bad uh, right now. Well, they're following these these <laughs> asinine professors and these 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 they're all politically professors. driven right exactly politically driven uh, college professors and 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 it uh, shouldn't even be in the, the college campus anyway. Keep your political garbage out of the out of the students here unless you're a political you know science teacher or something but you're not if you're just talking politics and saying oh we need to remove guns well really has it hurt you so far well students at the university of colorado's boulder and colorado springs campuses don't agree on whether or not to ban concealed carry surveys conducted by the cu independent and the scribe suggest CU Boulder students are far more likely to support a ban against carrying concealed firearms on campus, while a slimmer majority of UCCS students don't support such an effort. Campus concealed carry has been a controversial issue for CU students for decades, but it reemerged in public discourse after a shooting at UCCS. See, this is the thing. It reemerged as an issue after a shooting. Wouldn't that give you the clue that you need to protect yourself? No. Somehow they think a law is going to stop a criminal from coming on campus. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how, how you can get through to these stupid people. About fifty-seven percent of respondents at UCCS said they believed it was very or somewhat likely someone with a concealed carry firearm on campus could prevent a violent act. Okay, so fifty-seven percent believed that it was somewhat likely that a concealed carry person could. Could prevent violent acts. Some 37 said they believe the opposite. The likelihood of an individual with a concealed carry permit stopping a violent act is small considering the size of the campus. However, banning concealed carry would not will not prevent or hinder in any way an individual with violent intentions from openly bringing weapons to campus and using them. One UCC student wrote in a response. Okay. Okay, but they how are they going to determine that? How can they prove that that person with the concealed carry is not going to stop it? Right, right. What if 40 people on that day are carrying? Right. Right. That's, 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 that's such a garbage. <laughs> it's all. It's, it's just garbage. All I know is that if I, if I was in an area where I knew there was a, 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 a shooting or a stabbing or a killing of some sort, my logical thinking process, which is just just basic logic, tells me that, okay, if I'm going to be going into that area, I'm going to want to protect myself because it's already proven that this area is could be it is dangerous. It could be potentially dangerous. Oh, man, we're doomed. We are. <laughs> we are doomed. Oh, my God. These people are so stupid. I still like my idea, cutting the United States in half and putting the stupid liberals in one part and just do the conservatives on the other and just build a giant wall. Well, these people are so stupid, it's infuriating that they're so dumb. <laughs>
Oh, and then and then we talk about then we talk about gun laws and you know how how restrictive some of them are like in like in New York state um for instance so I wanted to get to one of our sponsors um this device that you see right over my whoops there we go this device <laughs> this device that you see right over my shoulder is called the Cali key it removes your AR from the definition of an assault weapon did you know that when so-called assault weapon ban lists are created. They exclude manually operated bolt action firearms. So just by dropping this, the Cali key, this, this little device right here, into your direct impingement AR, in place of your semi-automatic BCG, you'll have a bolt action rifle that falls outside the definition of so-called assault weapon. You don't need to do anything else. So give the Cali key a look because with it, you could retain all your rifle's features, avoid registration complications, revive your black rifle sales as an FFL, regain the ability to do private party transfers, legally transport across hostile jurisdictions, hunt with your AR in areas like Pennsylvania, enhance long-range precision and quieter suppressed shooting. And Cali key has state-specific expert attorney opinions, because every state's going to be a little different. So you want to check out their uh, attorney opinions on the website, and they support grassroots Second Amendment organizations with its sales. Cali Key's mission, to empower customers and claw back our civil liberties. So go to CaliKey.com and use the discount code LOADED. That's CaliKey.com, discount code LOADED. <clears throat> They're good people, too. I happen to know them personally, and... Uh, and uh, they're smart, very smart to create this thing. So anyway, um, and you've, you, you've seen the Cali key, right? We've uh -huh. had it, actually, we got it right here. Um, anyway, all right, so I can't talk about these stupid college kids anymore. Not, to, not even to mention that they're, they're, they're raising hell. They're, they're anti-Semitic. They're anti they hate Jews for some reason. They're raising hell on campus. And what's going on with these kids? They're just crazy. God. They're crazy. And then the wokesters are at it again with, well, I think it's time for a woke patrol. Woke patrol. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. So, so wait till you see this one. <laughs> The wokesters are bringing the tranny insanity to a new level. I call this one, Tranny the Clown Invades Your Town. Check this out. I think that I would like validation for my gender identity. There are some pictures of me. My pronouns are it and they. <laughs> my gender is none. No gender. I enjoy dressing in a more feminine, I guess, way. But I don't want to be associated with gender. I enjoy looking like a clown. I kind of view myself as a doll. I don't abide by gender. I'm built different. Hmm. What do you think of that? How would you like to date her? <laughs> <laughs> Poor kids. And these young guys are looking for girlfriends and stuff. Imagine a young guy, first time out, he's got to date that ridiculous no, thing. He ain't taking that clown anywhere. <laughs> what the hell was that? Imagine being that stupid idiot's parent. <laughs> like, at some point, what are you saying to the that kid? The problem is... The You're just saying, you know what? Don't even bother coming to dinner. The problem is the parents are probably just as stupid. They're feeding into that crap. It's the liberal, oh it's God. the new liberal way, I guess. Be Who's going to hire that stupid moron? Nobody. Because you know they're going to go back when this, this idiot's like 30 years old, right? And they're going to check their Facebook page and be like, is this you? <laughs> You're fired. You're, You're a moron. You're Get out of here. <laughs> You're not a clown. What you, what's wrong with you? I don't have an identity. Well, you're oh. somebody. You know, we're supposed to be tolerant. I'm not tolerant of these I idiots anymore. I'm not saying your pronouns. You can just shove them up your butt. <laughs> I don't care. Just tell me your stupid name and move on. <laughs> I'm not saying your pronouns. It's it's uh, it, it's, it's idiotic to, to fall to give into that garbage. He, she, they, them. Who gives a that, shit, stupid? She said she's a she's Oops. a it or a they or none. She's or, none. She's got no gender. So she doesn't pee. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? You don't have a Jenner? What does she have? Uh, triceratops? <laughs> how, how, how do you pee? How do you pee? If you're nothing, how are you peeing? Is it coming out of your mouth? Because there's a whole lot of poop coming out of it. <laughs> oh, look. I mean, seriously. I take... If that was my kid, I'd oh. smack the hell out of it. <laughs> you freaking clown. <laughs> Oh, oh my man. god. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. How do you don't pee? Know how the hell you do it? How do you teach an idiot like that? How does a clown come to your class and you say, "What am I going to teach it today?" Oh, <laughs> I would think the first I would lesson. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> that kid walked into my class, dude. I'm getting fired. I'd like it. I mean, get the hell out of here. Like, this is it's not it. Halloween. No, this, this, listen, that was six months ago. Get out. <laughs> go out and wash your face. Halloween's over. Go get your freaking trick or treat somewhere else. <laughs> God, oh these idiots! Uh, I know, I know. People are gonna say, "Oh, you guys are mean." I don't no, care. They I need to care. hear it. They knew it. it's 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 silly. Got to stop catering to these morons. It's it, it's idiotic. It really they do is. it at work. People at work, they're like, "Oh, I'm a, I'm a she them." No, you're Bobby. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I, I don't no I don't do anything. I'm just floating around here. Yeah. I just I just I just poof just magically <laughs> appeared on my mom's table one day. Uh, Hello. And I don't pee. And I don't pee. I'm just <laughs> it. All right. Well, <sighs> speaking of let's stay on the on the liberal insanity. Uh Blue State Paradise, vacant New York City storefronts creating havoc uh nearly double since the pandemic. New York City storefronts aren't as alluring as they once were. Uh, the brutal statistics coming out are bad, uh, but predictable. This is an article uh, from Western Journal. As of 2024, 11.2% of the city's storefronts are sitting vacant. This is up from 6%. So they doubled in uh, since 2019. So that doesn't seem like a huge number, but that 5.2 percentage point increase translate to an 86% increase from 2019 to to 2024 it's a massive jump manhattan council member and democrat gail brewer said these vacancies are creating havoc because there's homeless garbage and the businesses and the business next door hurts uh what's the cause of this trend well during a New York City Council Committee on Small Business Meeting on Wednesday, Calvin Brown, Deputy Commissioner of Neighborhood Development, stated the problem was due to archaic zoning barriers. I don't know about that. New York Mayor Adams has advocated for changing current zoning regulations. Uh, Adams' initiative, the city, uh, the city of Yes, aims to do just that. So I did hear something like um, they can't... if. What is it? if they if they can't provide housing for all these people, then technically they can't arrest them for camping out in the streets. So if the city can't provide enough housing for the homeless, then then they can't they can't arrest them. So maybe that's what they're talking about the zoning the zoning laws. So. But, but okay, so maybe you do need to change the zoning laws and, and either arrest these people or build go go build a big huge building and just keep them all there. But they don't they won't stay there. That's the problem. They'll they'll still go out into the streets. I keep wandering around. <laughs> uh, so, but are zoning restrictions really the problem? That's led to so many vacancies. The New York Post. Reports shoplifting cost retailers in the state $4.4 billion in 2022. Thefts, go thefts have gone up 64% between 19 and 23. Uh, the city retail thefts are up more than 6.5% as of April 24 compared to April 23. Uh, New York City Council member for Queens and Republican, Republican Vicki Palladino put it frankly. She said, We've got kids coming in on bicycles and just ransacking a store. She can she continued saying we can't sugarcoat the fact that there's rampant crime in the city that's preventing people from opening small businesses in areas that used to be nice places to go. So I just love how people in this state have no idea what's going on in New York City. Oh right. Because the liberal media is not gonna tell you that the place is a dump. 
Yeah. It's overrun with migrants. Crime is rampant. Yep. It's, it's filthy. Like, it's, it's a filthy garbage hole. But the only place that's clean is Manhattan. Want to know why? Because <clears throat> that's where their money comes in. Yeah. It's guarded with guys, with, with police officers with ARs. It's yep. guarded. Yep. And they Every street the, corner. And they keep yep. the homeless out. They keep the migrants out. Yep. And it's super clean because that's where vacationing and tourists come. Yeah. But if you go to the Bronx, Brooklyn. Queens. Queens. It's, they're all dumps. They have 10 cities yep. in, in, in the Bronx for the migrants. Well, later, we're gonna I'm going to show you Oakland. We talked about Oakland oh, last week. Dump. Yeah, wait till you see the video later. But that's coming up after the break. Um, but I want to get to, before we run out of time, unfortunately, the natural evolution of humanity has forced us to create a new segment on the loaded mic. Now, from time to time on the show, we're going to bring you clips of other human beings doing things that, well, maybe aren't the smartest things to do. Now, we call this new segment... to do something i think would an idiot do that and if they would i do not do that thing all right so for this episode we go to our canadian friends at one pug life on youtube to watch buddy van doodle jump a refrigerator with a lawnmower okay so friggin uh we're in inwoods boys and this is gonna be friggin awesome look at this Buddy Van Doodle, he's on the chair. We got the jump set up over here. Let's go have a look. Oh, so here he is just freaking doing some practice laps. We got the freaking jump set up. Look at the hangulations. So he's just going to freaking doodly do, and he's going to clear that. Freaking, it's going to be awesome. Oh, freaking right. Oh, give her, bud. Oh, hang on to her. Just out for a rip, eh? Give her <laughs> Friggin' right, this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> oh. uh, friggin' right, we got Buddy Van Dudo here. Okay, right, boy. One pug life that can. He's gonna do a big friggin' jump. Check this out. Holy shit. This is he gonna be awesome. Hip hip! The ramp's not even high enough to jump it. I think that's a refrigerator and a dryer on top oh, of something. That's up there. Go over it. Oh, for a friggin' rip. Oh, dick. Oh, dick. Oh, holy <laughs> Look at his helmet. His helmet fell right off. Oh, oh that had to hurt. Oh, dick. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He yeah, almost a, had it. Look, that's a dryer on top of a refrigerator. He almost had it. Oh, watch the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot to strap it on. Oh, my God. You okay, buddy? I'm good, boy. Oh, friggin' rights, you okay, did. Boy. Friggin' rights, yeah. do your friggin' currency, bud. <laughs> <laughs> So we like to mix it up on the show a little bit. <laughs> this next one here, I'm not sure how to categorize this next clip, but it shows the level of violence that's brewing in our country. So I got to warn you, this clip may not be for everyone. Um, in this clip, you'll see a violent thug beat up a handicapped girl as she struggles desperately to get back to her wheelchair. Now I show you this clip to highlight the fact that there are animals living among us, and you should be vigilant in protecting yourself and your family. <laughs> Who does that? And they're laughing about it. They're laughing. They're filming and laughing. I hope. Oh, and she tries to get back to her wheelchair. Now they do it again to her in the in in the elevator. Who does this? What kind of that animal? Was my kid. Let me tell you something. Those kids. Those kids would be. Out. What kind of animal does that? This is savage. This is kids not raised right. If that was my kid in the wheelchair, there'd be nothing left of those two. I'm sorry. That that's disgusting. They, there are some serious issues with kids today. 
That's zero respect. How can you how can you do that? How can you beat They're up a little? Def- they, they think that's funny. <laughs> they really think that's funny. I don't know if that's staged, but it can't be. Uh, I I don't know. I hope something. I hope those kids pay for that. That's just awful. Oh, someone's gonna get them. And the girl could barely walk, and they're beating up on her. I don't know, man. I'm not sure what happened to some of these kids. They, they just... No fathers. Yeah, that's probably part of it. And even the fathers, you know, we're talking about four generations of welfare now. Yeah, I mean, the fathers are useless. He, these stupid women are having <clears throat> 10 kids, collecting off the government. The father's nowhere to be found. He can't even pay a child support. It's dirtbags. Well... Yeah, I hope those. Uh, if we find out if those girls have been prosecuted or anything, I'll we'll we'll, we'll yeah, let we you know. Definitely follow up on that. We'll follow up on that. That is just awful. Um, we're gonna go to a quick break. Check out our sponsor. We'll be right back. We got a lot more, a lot more fun stuff for you. The Cali Key removes your AR from the definition of an assault weapon and lets you keep your rifle with all its features avoid registration hassles, and transport in hostile jurisdictions. The Cali Key also lets you hunt in jurisdictions like Pennsylvania and enhances long-range precision shooting. Cali Key's expert legal opinions empower informed decisions, and sales help grassroots Second Amendment organizations. Cali Key is your tool to keep and equip your AR, empower yourself, and defend your civil rights. Our founding fathers saw them coming over 200 years away. That's why they wrote the Second Amendment. Join us in the fight to preserve your gun rights and stop unconstitutional gun control. Gun Owners of America is the country's only no-compromise gun rights organization. Not only do we inform and educate, but we bring the fight to court and win. Your God-given right to keep and bear arms is our top priority. Become a member today and help us take back America. Join us at gunowners.org. Now, sometimes the anti-gun crowd think they're above the law and they don't have to acknowledge the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, or specifically the Second Amendment. Uh, Some of them even think that their position on guns is so righteous that they can simply make decisions that affect the lives of everyone just because they feel it's valid. In this particular situation regarding magazine capacity, we have a commissioner, also known as a law clerk, not a judge, overriding a judge's order and taking it upon himself to make law for the people of Washington state. So here's an article in Ammo Land by my friend and editor, Freddie Real, and it's called Rogue Washington Supreme Court Commissioner Displays Total Ignorance of the Second Amendment. And what they're talking about here is the focal point of this ongoing battle is a recent ruling by Judge Gary Basher of Cowlitz County which deemed the state's ban on magazine magazines holding more than 10 rounds unconstitutional. The decision underscores a pivotal moment in our understanding and application of constitutional rights, specifically the right to keep and bear arms. So Judge Basher's decision issued on April 8th didn't just stir the pot, it boiled it over. In a meticulously crafted 55-page ruling, he addressed the ban imposed by Washington State highlighting its contradiction with both state and federal constitutions. Now, the judge judge's argument was clear. The restrictions infringe on the fundamental individual right to bear arms, cornerstone of American liberty. However, the victory was short-lived. Within a mere 88 minutes... Post-decision, a Supreme Court commissioner, a role akin to a high-level law clerk, issued a stay. And Attorney General Bob Ferguson filed an emergency appeal to the state Supreme Court seeking to get the law back on the books. Michael Johnston, the Washington State Supreme Court commissioner that you see here, granted an emergency stay, keeping the ban in effect. This action temporarily halted the enforcement of Judge Basher's initial ruling, sparking a flurry of debate and confusion about the powers and limits of legal authorities in such matters. So this clown here, who was essentially a a glorified law clerk, granted an emergency stay overriding a judge's decision. What are your thoughts? And he still has a job. Why? 
How, how and how is it still tangled up if he's he has no authority? <laughs> if a Supreme Court judge did something and this idiot says no, what? I, exactly. <laughs> I guess you know he can do whatever he wants in this country. Yeah. Well, as long as you're if you're a, a left wing anti gunner, nut job, liberal, whatever, you pretty much can get away with everything because you got the system on your side. For now, that's not going to last forever, and I hope they're ready when they have to start being held accountable for some of this stuff, because it will happen at some point. Um, anyway, we do have a video um, clip of the Washington state law clerk justifying his position for magazine cap, mag cap restrictions. And then our friend Mark Smith from Four Boxes Diner explaining why he's wrong. Check this clip out. Now, the way I look, the way I look at a magazine, this is the way I look at it. Okay, as a magazine, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, an essential component for a semi-automatic weapon for sure. Uh, but uh, you know, a, a semi-automatic weapon works just fine with five rounds, you know, or ten rounds. Uh, one of the remarkable statements I, I saw in a, in a trial court uh, order, and it's really pretty remarkable to me, was uh, it was basically saying that a, a, an LCM is functionally identical to a 10 round magazine, you know? Well, yeah, that's kind of true and true in a sense that they feed rounds into the weapon as the weapon is fired, but the similarity ends at the 11th round. Okay. And in that, that sense, they're, they're not, they're not um, functionally identical in, in any way. And then, then you have magazines that are hundred round capacity. So, <laughs> okay, so this is a typical argument, but it's clearly wrong for a whole host of reasons. Mark First of all, well as we've talked about, when you ban, and we're not even going to talk about whether or not a magazine is an arm for a moment. We're going to get to that in one second. But just think about it for a moment. I've explained this to you before, that when you ban magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, you have engaged in banning firearms. You have banned an entire category of firearms, which the Supreme Court has unequivocally said in the Heller case in 2008, you cannot do. Why do I say this? Just just think about this intellectually for a moment. If you ban magazines that can hold more than 10 rounds, it means that you have banned an entire category of firearms consisting of those firearms that are capable of firing more than 10 rounds without having to be manually reloaded. So you've essentially banned in the state of Washington all firearms capable of shooting 11 or more rounds without needing to reload. That in and of itself is an entire category of firearms, not just magazines, but firearms that you have banned. Okay, so what Mark is saying, I think, is if a firearm is capable of shooting more than 10 rounds without reloading, but you're taking away that Ability. Ability, you're actually restricting that firearm from doing what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And they have the argument that, well, we're not, you know, we're not banning the firearm, we're banning the magazine. Well, dummy, <laughs> it's the same damn thing. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Oh my God. What, what is this? <laughs> why does this country become so stupid? Look, if they if they if they get away with banning 10 round magazines or anything above 10 round, or even like we had in New York, we were down to seven rounds for a little while. If they get comfortable there, don't you think they're going to go to three rounds? Yeah. And eventually one round and eventually no magazines at all. Yeah. I have to load one by one, one by one. See, that's what dummy doesn't know either. Is you can get out a 10 round magazine, but you can also just put one in the chamber too. And you have 11 and you have 11, right? Look, it, it, you should be able to have as many bullets, as many rounds as you can carry. Yeah. Because you don't know how many people you're going to be attacked by. And if you're limited, like in New York State, to 10 rounds, you're limited. You're getting attacked by three or four guys with guns. What are you going to do? You can't. You can't. 10 rounds isn't even enough. You need to have multiple rounds in that magazine. You need to have multiple magazines, and you need to be ready to, to protect yourself. But this... Ass hat is that a word? Ass hat. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> this ass hat. What's his name again? I gotta say his name. 
Michael Johnston, Washington State Johnson. Supreme Court Commissioner, <laughs> this ass hat. What do they call the wiener? A Johnson. Can you show? There he is. There okay, he is. Look, so at he's, look at that look clown. At he's still a virgin. He, he's still a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> he's like 80 years old, look still a virgin. He thinks that he can justify banning magazines because you're not actually banning the firearm. He is wrong. When you ban the magazine, you restrict the firearm. But who the hell is he anyway? He ain't nobody. He's not a even a judge. Yeah, a commissioner. Yeah. Do your job, stupid. Do your job, stupid. Go away. He, he should be doing his job by supporting the Second Amendment. He should retire because but... he looks like a fossil. Oh, these people drive me crazy. Today, this show's driving me crazy. But you want to know who's fighting for your gun rights? Gun Owners of America. GOA is the no compromise gun rights group. Now, I urge you to become a member at gunowners.org. So what have they done? Well, GOA secured a preliminary injunction against the ATF pistol brace rule. GOA members submitted a record 85,000 plus comments opposing the ATF's universal registration check rule. They helped enact permitless carry in Nebraska and Florida. GOA secured victories in California, Illinois, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. Plus, they won two legal victories against the ATF zero tolerance policy, and GOA fought to overturn Joe Biden's ban on funding hunter education, shooting sports, and archery in schools. So with the constant attacks on our Second Amendment, you know, we often ask ourselves, what can I do about it? This is what you can do. Become a member at gunowners.org and help us save the Second Amendment. So, all right. Yeah, that just uh, that 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 guy just infuriates me. That they that they think they can have so much, they have so much power, they can do whatever the hell they want. Disregard the concept. I don't know. Go ahead. What do you think? Yeah, it's just I don't know. We're <laughs> I wish these stupid liberals would wake up and see how their government really is because they're not for you. They don't care about you. They don't. They think that if they take everyone's <clears throat> guns away, that the government's going to protect you? How'd that work out for the uh, Nazi Germany? Riots are starting. The, the pro-Hamas, anti- I say send them over there. Send them over there for a... a yep. Give them a t-shirt. I support you. I'm from America. Uh, just just to, Make sure you're wearing a GoPro because I want to see what happens. It's just infuriating that these, these privileged kids in... America, because we're all anybody who's living in America has has benefits that other the rest of the world doesn't have. Except they got a little bit more. Yeah, liberals and, have a little bit more leeway. Yeah, and they and they can do these stupid protests and denounce their fellow students who are Jewish, who come from Israel, who who happens to be our al one of our best allies. And they're and they're denouncing these kids in in college. The kids, the kids um, on campus are scared to death because of these left wing lunatics, these Nazis. So um, the good news is the the police, the campus police, are starting to make some arrests, but they're just letting them back out. How about the colleges put in forth a, a rule? You cannot harass students because of, of their their creed. Because I think the colleges are because here's an idea, here's something. If the Jewish people weren't contributing to your stupid college, yeah, like Harvard yeah. and Princeton, which yeah. are losing tens of millions of dollars from donors yeah. of Jewish descent because you're anti Semitic. Right. So how's that gonna work out for you when you don't have any yeah. money? Are the stupid white liberal kids who are, who are idiots gonna pay for that? No. No. Because you know who's paying for them? The government. Yeah. Soros and yeah, there's 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 other people. It's the dirtbags who are getting a free ride, who are harassing the people who actually pay for college, who are actually smart enough to go to college, who actually run ninety percent of the country here because they're they own they own Hollywood. I, I could never understand why Democrats hate Jewish people so much. I don't get I, it. I don't understand. They keep it. to themselves. Yeah. And they I don't know bother lot, anybody. I know a lot of Jewish people. And they're good people. I, I have no idea. Anybody. So what? So because Israel's attacking someone who attacked them, you're against Israel? Uh, really? <laughs> it's just, uh, it just doesn't make sense. These kids are so stupid today. 
I think they do it just just to do it, just to be noticed. Yeah, well, just like the protests, you know, I wish maybe next week we'll we'll show some videos of them uh, stopping traffic. Don't you love these? Did you see the NYPD take care of them? <laughs> oh, the, right, the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah, yeah right. that didn't right, last right. long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the ones when the when the you know the, the people get so pissed off. That they grab him. One one woman grabs this girl by the hair and drags her off the road. Some people are just running right into him. Um, but you saw the Golden Gate Bridge, right? Uh, I think so. What? Five hours it was closed. Yeah. Because scumbag Newsom doesn't do anything. Yeah. The police were there for five hours. These people were trapped on that Could bridge. Could you imagine? Let me give you something. If I was on that bridge, there'd be a lot of bodies flying over the side of it. Yeah, people would be going Oh, you want to fly? Let me show you how that works. Because five hours, people were trapped because they blocked both ends of the of the a bridge. Ugh. So there was cars on the bridge that couldn't move for five and hours. And the police let it go Didn't for five come. hours. Just sat there and watched it because Newsom told them to stand down probably. Ugh. And just if there's anybody from California watching <clears throat> and you're a liberal, you're a moron. You suck. Yep. How can you how can you elect such a dumbass into office? How? And and let him stay there. You got something about Oakland. Let's talk about it. Um. Okay. Well, let's skip ahead then. Let's skip to Oakland because then yeah, we'll come, we'll come back to the other one. Okay. All right. Why is it that everything Democrat city and state officials touch turns to crap? Mm. We talked about a lot about Oakland recently. Oakland, California. Here's a clip of just how bad things have become in this hellhole. Way like the music. <laughs> from your oh my city. god, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> Looks like Peru. Wow. Today, escape. Yeah, they're building like houses out of tarps. Nice job, Democrats. Wow. Nice job. And they still vote for that guy. That's Yeah, well, they still vote for Newsom, but I'm going to talk about the mayor of Oakland. Look at that. Now I know why my team moved out of Oakland. Oh, the car's stuck in the mud. They just left it there. Look at that. I hear Oakland's lovely this time of year. <laughs> 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 I bet you half board. those cars were stolen. They were just left there. So you have to wonder who's okay. So who's running the show? How how is that mayor still in office? Well, there's nobody to vote for him. Here's some info on this useless mayor. Oh, God. oh there's your problem. Yeah. So her name is Shen Tao. Shen Tao. Whatever it is. Shang Shang Tao. And of course, she's a Democrat. But I got a little info on her. So we did a little a little research on Shang Tao. And she was once homeless and fleeing abuse. And then she becomes the mayor of Oakland, California. And she's 37 years old, domestic violence survivor and the daughter of refugees. And she's the first Hmong, Hmong, Hmong American mayor to lead a major city in the United States. Well, she's doing a crappy job. All right, well, her four years is up. So there's. let me tell you something. we got to stay on this because if this idiot gets reelected, I, California needs to have a, a, a 50, <laughs> the highest magnitude earthquake and fall off, the, just, just break off into the ocean. Well, get this. Because that's crazy. A little more than a, dec- a decade ago, Shang Tao was living in her car and sleeping on strangers' couches with her newborn son, unsure where she'd find her next meal. Now she's mayor, and what has she done for the people who who are homeless now? Nothing. That's weird. She becomes the youngest mayor of Oakland, California, in seventy-five years, and the first Hmong American. Hmong is uh, in China, so she's making six figures probably. Um, after winning November's election by fewer, she won the election by fewer than seven hundred votes. So, being the first Hmong to represent a city with hardly any Hmong people that's broken 
broken a glass ceiling. So this is the thing. Oh, she's broken a glass ceiling. Hamong's never. See, there's that first <sighs> oh, first so garbage again. I know. Oh, the first this, the first that. That doesn't mean crap. Look what she did. Look at Oakland. That literally looks like a that probably, that looks like a third world country from where she came from. Is that what she wants it to look like? Apparently, because she's not doing anything about it. All right. So we know Oakland is a majority black. We we know this. What are they doing? How can you drive down the street and see that and be okay with your neighborhood looking like well, that? Well, over the next eight years, she said she hopes to build at least 30,000 new housing units across the city. <laughs> with what money? <laughs> well, the states and billions of dollars of debt. She's building them. They're tents. They're tents and pallets. That's yeah. how she's building yeah, she's them. Getting- She's giving them pallets and tarps. Hey, build your mansion over there, stupid. Wow. Uh, She spoke with NBC Asian American about her vision for Oakland and how her upbringing shaped her advocacy for working families. Uh, Well, I don't know what shape she's looking at, but that does not look good. What a joke. What a I joke. Mean, she, but, oh, but, God, but the problem California is, people, what is wrong with you? I, I don't know. And you know what? I have friends in California who are probably like, well, they're probably like us. You know, we can't stand what's happening here in New York. And, and but you have the problem is you have more idiots than rational thinking people. And they're not showing you that on the news, though. I know. That's what people don't get. You got to go see it for yourself because people probably think Oakland's clean. That's not clean. Oakland's a hellhole. It's a <laughs> wow. Yeah, man, there are some real stupid people in California. They keep voting for it. I, 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 don't, I don't get it. I don't get it either. I really, honest to God, I don't get it. If that woman, we got to keep a close eye on it because she's got to be up for re-election soon, like this fall, I think. We got to keep eyes on her because if she gets reelected, we're going to Oakland. Yeah, we're going to Oakland. We're going, and say, no, we're going to Oakland. We're going to be talking <laughs> to the black folks and say, really? This is what you get. Come for a ride with me, bud. I want to show you something. Yeah. Because this is what you voted for. Well, the problem is they cheat. So she could very well get back in because the Democrats will cheat to get her back in. It, it's a, it's it's like this People constant self. Up for themselves, well, it's a constant self-destruction. And I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand. I mean, you'd think that more people start coming out and and fighting against it and voting against it and doing whatever they can to get these people out of office, but and it, you'd have to think that Newsom is intent on destroying the state, just like Kathy Hochul is with New York. He's definitely destroying California. You have to you you have to look at what they're doing and their policies and the results of those policies over and over for length of time. Now, now I, I would say, okay, if you had a bad policy, you made a mistake over a year or two, you'd figure it out and you'd change. No. They don't. No. Hochul's a moron. She might be related to Newsom somehow. Maybe they're brother and sister. Well, she's not very smart, but I don't think it's about how stupid she is. I think it's more about money she might be getting. I think. Yeah, she's definitely getting paid. Well, look at that idiot. Uh, what's her name? Fanny Willis. She's yeah. worth twenty four million dollars, but she makes one hundred and ten grand a year. Yeah, how's that happen? Really? How? I'm mostly worried about voter ID and things like that because if they can, if they can continue to cheat, you know how you, stuff's never going to. How voting should go now? Fingerprint. Well, good idea. You can't duplicate a fingerprint. They don't. The Democrats would fight that to the to the end of, of the year. Of course they will, because then that 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 right there should tell the American <laughs> stupid people who vote for these idiots. That they don't want legitimate voting. Right. Um, but that just goes to show you, if they're not willing to take a fingerprint for voting, and your face comes up and it goes right, in, right into this system, you're done. Right. That right there will prove to you stupid people that they do not well, want legitimate <clears throat> ways to cheat. And and just just to, to kind of reiterate on that, on what, what Danny said, making the joke that the Democrats would say black people don't have fingerprints, they'll come up with any excuse oh, they will. to make it to, to to make it easy for anybody to to cheat. Yeah, because so, every cemetery will have a giant hole and everybody's finger will be missing. <laughs> yeah, they'll start cutting fingers off. They'll start cutting fingers off. Oh, hey, bye, bye. before you put that in the hole, we're going to need that tip. Ah, that's the next thing. Yeah, Democrats will come up with a way to to, to remove your fingerprints. Yeah. They'll do anything. I'm telling you. Uh, anyway, Idaho Supreme Court upholds voter ID law. So here's an article uh, by magicvalley.com. 
press release from April 11th reports that the Idaho Supreme Court upheld Idaho's voter ID law in a 5-0 to zero decision and affirmed in full the district's the district court's decision from last October in Babe Vote and League of Women Voters of Idaho versus Phil McGrain. Idaho's challenged law states that student identification cards are not valid identification when it comes to registering to vote, citing a lack of uniformity and sophistication. This is a strong victory for election security and the minimum standards that must be met in order to vote, said Attorney General uh, General Raul uh, Labrador in a press release. The Idaho legislature took steps to improve our election security, he says, but rather than encouraging young people to obtain their free state voter IDs, advocacy groups took legal action against the state, alleging age discrimination. We're pleased with this victory, but acknowledge liberal advocacy groups are bringing similar claims in federal court, and we will continue to defend these laws. So there you go. It just, just goes to show you they don't want <clears throat> legitimate. They don't want legitimate elections. Of course not. They can't cheat if it's legitimate. Were you say legitimate before COVID? I don't think anybody has cheated. Really? Do you, I mean, do you think anybody has cheated? Not like they did in the. I think in Obama the was voted incorrectly. Right. They didn't cheat. I think the, Trump was voted incorrectly in 16. But 2020 was 2020 outrageous. 2020 was definitely cheated. Definitely it was outrageous. Cheated. I don't care what any liberal stupid idiot says. That well, was, they were they cheated. You had stupid Joe who couldn't attract flies. and He was in his basement. He wasn't going out campaigning. He wasn't doing anything. Trump is pulling down 50,000-seat arenas. Yeah. And somehow stupid Joe gets more votes than any president in American history? <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah, right. And then they're putting cardboard up in Philly so the so you can't people can't see what they're doing? Yeah. And then a, a pipe burst and they stop voting for 3 hours and all of a sudden Joe's ahead? Come yeah. on. Come on. Don't we're not stupid. Don't don't I mean, liberals oh. are stupid, but conservatives aren't stupid. Oh we, my we god. Knew, we knew exactly what was going we on. No what happened. It was a big scam and a big cheat. COVID was on purpose. It was it's just everything. The well, vac, you know, they all, their vaccines, a joke. Just people anyway. are just so brainwashed and stupid. It's crazy. Right. It was an angry show today. Very angry. Very angry. Sometimes and we're liberals. angry. But thanks for watching The Loaded Mike on Rumble and YouTube. Uh, you can also catch us on Ops Lens, uh, Right America Media, uh, Simul TV, the key radio network. And you can find us on just about any podcast platform out there. Uh, I'm Dan Wass, and the Second Amendment is not a privilege. It's your right.